Hello, I'm Jesse. Did you recently dig out your old Game Boy from your parents' basement? Or maybe you built a new one from a kit online. But now you need a cartridge to put in them. So let's build one. So what I'm going to be doing here today is building a 32K flash cart. Original cartridges were manufactured with ROM chips that were programmed with the game data at the factory. Of course, we want our flash cartridge to be rewritable. So I'm going to use this here, which is a flash memory chip uh, with a whopping four megabits or 500 kilobytes of storage capacity. You can also use an EEPROM or any other solid state writable memory. Now, if you want to know how to use chips like this, the place to start is the chips data sheet. And we're going to make most use of this page of the data sheet here, which tells us what each pin of the chip does. So that lets us know how we're going to be able to, how we're going to be wiring it up uh, to get our flashcard. And if you notice here on the diagram, there's this little half circle. And if we look here on the chip, we can see a little matching half circle here. And that just tells us uh, how to orient the chip. So it lets us know that up here, this pin is pin one. We're also going to need something like this. This is a cartridge breakout board. And what it does is it connects all of these pads from the cartridge up to some more convenient pins so that you can um, connect all sorts of stuff and do silly things with a Game Boy cartridge, like what we're about to do. I'm also gonna use this solderless breadboard, um, which will make it easy to wire everything up without solder, obviously. And to connect everything together, I made this little uh, adapter, which plugs into the, so the, uh, the breadboard, and then you can connect a ribbon cable like this, one end to here, and the other end to the uh, breakout board. And then now our Game Boy cartridge is connected to a solderless breadboard. And I'm also going to use this zero insertion force or ZIF socket. It's going to make it really easy to connect and disconnect the flash chip. You can just plug this straight into the solderless breadboard, um, but it gets a little bit hard with a chip this size to pull it out and put it back in, and you can risk damaging it, so it's much easier. And the reason we're going to need to pull it out is because the way we program this flash cart is using something like this. This is the TL8662+, and it's for programming uh, chips. And this particular model, I think, has been discontinued, but there's a newer one. I'll include information in the, in the, in the video description. And it just connects to your computer with USB. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to connect is the ground and plus 5 voltage pin. And I'm going to keep the breakout board here because you'll notice that these pins here have labels all on them uh, tell you what they do. So I'm going to keep it oriented in the same way as uh, the, the little adapter is oriented to make things easy. So first we're going to pull the connect the plus 5 volts from the cartridge breakout to these this uh, positive rail. So we got the, the power connected, uh, the plus five volts connected, and connect the ground to, so that's our first, our first order of business. Now, if we have a look at the data sheet again, we'll notice that the chip we're using, which is the SST39SF040, it actually has address pins that go up to A18. And if we look here on our breakout board, the address pins only go up to A15. So we have a few extra address pins and it's always good practice when you have pins that, especially input pins to a chip that you're not going to use, you want to connect them to either the positive voltage or the ground value. Um, and in this case, uh, the ground value is representing a zero. We want, we want those address pins to always be 
uh, treated as zero or a low value. So we're gonna connect them to ground. And since a lot of them are on this side, I'm going to bring over uh, wire to connect uh, the ground from either side here because they they wouldn't otherwise be connected. So we want to connect uh, A18 to ground. Let's double check I got that right. And I'm just using a multimeter uh, with its continuity setting function. Huh? Good. Got it wrong. Good thing I checked. Yeah. Good thing I checked. Now what about A15? The thing is, A15, we have an A15. It just so happens that the Game Boy was designed so that all the addresses that were meant for the cartridge's ROM chip all have A15 set to zero. And this chip is never going to see an address where A15 isn't zero. We can actually just tie this, tie A15 to ground as well. So now we have a few other connections that we need to, to, to make. I guess the most important ones are um, VDD and VSS. So VDD is going to be connected to the plus five volts. And honestly, I never remember that. I have to look it up every time. And VSS is connected to ground. Got that right, good. Now we have a few control pins. For example, the right enable pin, WE. And that pin is what's called active low. So it is turned on when there's a low signal. Uh, so if we want it to be off, we need to give it a high signal. So we'll connect that to plus five volts. Now we have two pins down here. We have OE and CE. So OE is output enable and CE is chip enable. I'm going to use have chip enable always on and output enable. I'm actually going to connect that to uh, the A15 coming from the cartridge. So those are all our um, control connections. Now it's going to be the address lines that we're going to connect. Now, if we look at the data sheet again, you'd see the, the address pins are, are a little bit all over the place. So it is a little bit frustrating, but yeah, it should be fun. We'll start with A1, A0, I mean. So those are all of the address pins connected. Now it's time for the data pins. Data pins are a little bit more orderly, starting with A0, uh, D0, sorry. So that's all the connections we need to make. Now it's time to program this little chip. Now we have the chip in the programmer. We need to use some software to program it on Linux. It's called Mini Pro, and I'll link to information about that in the video description. This is the chip identifier. I want to write a test ROM. And dash S says Ignore the fact that this file is too small. There we go. And that's it. Now we can test it. Let's take the chip out of the programmer, put it in our little flash card here, and plug it into, I'm going to use the FPGBC just because it's a little bit easier on the eyes. Let's see if it works. And looks like maybe no. Let's try on a actual Game Boy. Mm 
Yeah. So this should be the Nintendo logo. That means something's not working. I'll get back to you. Okay. I figured it out. So remember when I said the chip enable is active low? Well, I tied it to plus five volts, which means this chip was never enabled. So I just have to connect it to properly to ground. And then plug everything back in. And let's see. It works. All right. Now let's try maybe an actual ROM. So I tried this a few times with the FPGBC and it wasn't working for some reason, but it works fine with the original Game Boy. connected properly. And you can play Tetris on this wonderful flashcard. Man, yeah, when I connect it to the FPGBC, it just kind of freezes. I don't know why. It might just be the connections not getting in. Well, but it worked fine with my other test ROM, so I don't know, something weird. Anyways, thanks for coming along with me on this silly adventure. Bye!